Dear friends, today we are going to deal with a topic of great importance for the Marian Refuge Monastery, that Father Juan Guillermo is building. It is about the pastoral plan, of the little Mayugorhi. To understand the scope of this pastoral plan, it is necessary to refer, initially, to sacred scripture, to the text of the 17th chapter of the first book of the prophet Samuel, where the deed of the death of the giant Goliath at the hands of David is narrated. For many of us, the story is well known, but for those who wish to do so, we recommend that they read and meditate on chapter 17 of the first book of Samuel in the light of the Holy Spirit. Let us make a comparison of the situation of the Kingdom of Israel at that terrible time, with the present situation of the Church and the world. The Kingdom of Israel, headed by Saul symbolizes the Church, the people of God. Saul had committed the sin of disobedience to God's commands, and because of this, his kingdom fell into disgrace and was under imminent defeat by the mighty army of the Philistines. The Philistine army symbolizes the satanic New World Order and its associates. The giant Goliath symbolizes the power of evil that no one dares to confront because of its immense and well-equipped warlike, propagandistic, and strategic might. David, God's anointed, humble and simple, symbolizes the little faithful remnant, formed by the Blessed Virgin Mary, who confronts Goliath, who dared to challenge, and offend the true and living God. David's sling symbolizes the true faith. The river from which he obtained the five smooth stones, symbolizes the Holy Spirit. It is not said if David used all five stones, but one stone was enough to end the life of Goliath, and David demonstrated an unshakable faith when he said, God, who has delivered me out of the paws of the lion and the bear, will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. We could go on to delve into more similarities, but these suffice for our purpose. The five stones that David kept in his bag, prefigure the weapons against the evil, that in these times, we have received from the hands of the Blessed Virgin Mary, as we will see below. With the apparitions of Our Lady of the Rosary in Fatima, Portugal, in 1917, an extraordinary period in the history of salvation began, marked by the powerful presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the world. She came to confirm to us that God exists, to remind us of the Novosimos, events that will happen at the end of the life of every human being. Death, personal judgment, and his destiny as a consequence of how he led his life, heaven, purgatory, or hell. The Blessed Virgin appeared amid a great conflagration in Europe, the First World War, to tell us that this war was the consequence of sin. She announced that this war would soon be over, but that there would be another, worse war, if humanity did not convert. The world did not convert, it continued to sin gravely, and as a consequence, the Second World War broke out, which claimed the lives of 40 million human beings, in addition to the Jewish Holocaust. Mary instilled in the little shepherds Lucia, Jacinta, and Francisco, heroic virtues for children of their age. The virtue of prayer of the heart, with the daily recitation of the Holy Rosary. The examination of conscience, with the confession of sins, committed. Fasting is the offering of every sacrifice, of every pain, sorrow, or sickness for the conversion of poor sinners. The profound and respectful adoration of the Holy Eucharist. Love for the Holy Mass. It instilled in Jacinta a fervor for the Holy Father, for whom she felt deep love, concern, and affection. 
This led her to pray for Hai M and to suffer all kinds of sacrifices, no matter how painful they might be. The Blessed Mother asked Lucia to learn to read and to educate herself because she would be the one who would make her known and loved. Implicit in this request to Lucia, is the desire that she would know and love, the Holy Scriptures, the Word of God. And so that there would be no doubt about the transcendence of the message of this apparition, God crowned it with the great miracle of the Son, before an impressive crowd of witnesses of about 70,000 people, with countless miracles of conversion and healings. However, humanity did not accept this important message as it should have. Nor did the Church give it the relevance it deserved in the face of the events and convulsions in which, since then and until now, it has been involved. Sixty-four years later, in 1981, the Blessed Virgin manifested herself in Mayugorhi, in the Balkans, in a small village located in what is now Bosnia-Herzegovina, under the title of the Queen of Peace. God the Father, has sent the Mother of His Most Holy Son, to prepare herself for the definitive triumph of Her Immaculate Heart, announced at Fatima. The essence of the broad and extensive message of the Queen of Peace, given in Meyugorhi, is reduced to five roots that form the trunk of the tree of true conversion to Christ. The Five Little Stones Father Yozo Zovko, parish priest of Meyugorhi at the time of the beginning of the apparitions, liked to allude to the biblical passage in which David confronts the giant Goliath, and how he was able to defeat him with just a simple wave and a pebble. It was his way of showing how Our Lady, through the extraordinary pedagogy of her messages, personally leads her children on the path of conversion, holiness, and peace towards eternal salvation using five weapons that Father Zovko called, the five little stones. Now we come to the year 2018. In that year, the Archdiocese of Mexico raised the need for each parish to develop a new pastoral plan, focused on recovering the evangelizing mission of the Church, called by Pope Francis. Since then, all parish groups in all parishes were called to participate in the development of the new pastoral plan, to promote and strengthen the permanent mission, ensuring that the parish community implements the necessary means to move forward on the path of pastoral and missionary conversion. Unfortunately, due to the situation that is being experienced within the church, a situation that you are well aware of, which has led so many dioceses, in the elaboration of pastoral plans, to reduce them to mechanization, continuous programming, a continuous fulfillment of objectives and overflowing activism, resulting in priests and the faithful, as a spiritual emptying, as a loss of meaning, the main objective of the Church, which is to be the sacrament of salvation. Given this situation, Father Juan Guillermo's parish community of Santa Maria de la Natividad, did not propose a pastoral plan different from the one requested by the Archdiocese of Mexico, but a plan that sought to give spice, seasoning, spark, fervor, spirituality, and enthusiasm to every pastoral plan. Father Juan Guillermo tells us, that his initial proposal to the parish community was to make a total, public, and solemn consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, according to the spirituality contained in the book of St. Louis Marie Grignian de Montfort, Treatise on the True Devotion to the Blessed Virgin, under the motto of the Papal Coat of Arms of St. John Paul II, Totus Tuus, All Yours. This act welcomed and carried out after a serious and intense preparation, had the prodigy of transforming the hearts and minds of the members of all the parish groups involved. 
This constituted a before and after that changed the life of the parish community. From then on, the community was already living in a Marian spirituality, full of religious fervor, loving and adoring Jesus in the Eucharist, and it was then that Father Juan Guillermo, in union with the parish groups, developed the project of the pastoral plan of the parish, based on the five five little stones, bases, on which the tree of conversion to Christ is built. For greater understanding, the name Pebbles was changed to Roots, and the image you see now, which Father Juan Guillermo visualized in deep prayer, was elaborated. See in this image of the tree the root of sacred scripture. It is a proposal of our Heavenly Mother, who tells us. Little children, recover again the sacred scriptures, as a book of prayer. And the prayer of the heart, the Holy Rosary. And the Eucharist, the center and life of the Church. Saint John Paul II told us so many times, the Church lives from the Eucharist. That is why we put the Eucharist at the center, the center and life of the Church. The Church lives from the Eucharist. The extraordinary effort of Mary Most Holy to recover the confession in all the parishes, in all the dioceses of the whole world. Confession is the basis of a path of conversion, of the forgiveness of sins. It was precisely because of the use of that little stone, that little by little, thanks to the intervention of our mother, the parish began to be recognized with the title, with the nickname, T. Telpan, Confessional of Mexico City, Place of Grace and Conversion. Central to the spirituality of Fatima are fasting, penance and sacrifice. Why fasting, penance, and sacrifice? Because without fasting, penance, and sacrifice there is no transformation or spiritual growth. And the cross and the spirituality of the cross are reached through the personal experience of penance and fasting, of small sacrifices. Through these five roots, we climb the tree of conversion to Christ, the goal of any believer. And when we climb the tree of conversion to Christ, it is then, that all parish activities come to life. If there is any group within the parish, that does not remain grafted onto the tree of conversion to Christ, it will be a dead branch. This is how the Lord expresses it. I am the vine and you are the branches. The one who remains in me, and I in him, will bear much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. So then, by climbing the tree of conversion to Christ through those five roots or pebbles, we insert ourselves into the center of the life of the Church, of the revitalization of the Church. There you see as branches on the tree of conversion to Christ, all the different parish groups, where the most important ones are shown. The group of the Extraordinary Ministers of Holy Communion, AMHC. The youth pastoral group is in charge of channeling young people to the pious service of the noble causes of the community, in an atmosphere of joy in faith and love for Christ. The family pastoral group, is in charge of helping to form families of prayer. Families integrated to Christ where the Holy Rosary is prayed. Families where food is blessed. Where obedience, silence, respect, and love reign. Families where, as our Blessed Mother has taught us, we learn to turn off the TV and the cell phone to gather in prayer, in the life of faith. Wonderful families, rebuilt by our Heavenly Mother. The Catechesis Group, is responsible for the children to grow in the life of faith within a parish, cultivating in the depths of their being the five little stones of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Liturgy Group, 
whose mission is to give due splendor to the liturgy. The group is in charge of organization, cleanliness, order, silence, reverence, and love for the Eucharist. They are the ones who, by their example, instill in the community the love, respect, and reverence for Eucharistic adoration. The liturgy and EMHC groups should become the crown jewel of the parish community. The group of popular religiousness is in charge of the rescue of the popular religiosity, of the return to the daily prayer of the Holy Rosary, of the prayer in family, the novena rise, the different devotions, of the love and the veneration to the saints. And all the activity of these groups bears fruit in the foundation of little houses of prayer, of small communities, conceived in the diocesan plan, communities based on prayer, on catechesis. And we see, above the tree, what would be the goals and objectives in any pastoral plan, which are, sanctification and salvation. We see that, according to the teachings of the Second Vatican Council, the Church is the sacrament of salvation, and all the children of the Church are called to reach these goals, personal sanctification and salvation. If through our pastoral plans, we do not reach personal sanctification and the salvation of our souls, we are falling by the wayside. You see now how in the background of all this, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, announced at Fatima, is already at the base. For this reason, the graphic shows a watermark, as they say nowadays, with the image of the Blessed Virgin. What it means is that behind this pastoral, is the Blessed Virgin Mary. In addition, observe the papal coat of arms, indicative of the union and fidelity, to the magisterium of the Pope. This is then, the proposal of Father Juan Guillermo. It is a proposal that, in no way, contradicts the pastoral plan that all the deans and pastors have been working on, with all the diocesan structure, but rather gives it seasoning, spice, sparkle, life, and soul, gives it meaning, takes away that aspect of robotization, mechanization, sterile activism, that so many pastoral plans have, and leads us to a realization of our vocation as Catholics. That is to say, insofar as it refers to the priestly vocation, to the vocation of the lay faithful, who also have the same goals, to reach sanctification and salvation. This pastoral plan was implemented by Father Juan Guillermo in the parish of Santa Maria de la Natividad in Telpan in 2019. It is a pastoral plan, that yielded abundant fruits of conversion and sanctification in his parish community, and in many faithful who from various parts of Mexico City joined in the community of life, even amid the pandemic, until the departure of the Father in August 2021. The social networks of the parish, reached some 650,000 visitors including bishops, deans, priests, religious men, and women, and countless faithful from various spiritualities of Mexico and many countries. Father received countless expressions of gratitude for this proposed pastoral plan from bishops, deans, and priests. This is the pastoral plan, of little Mayogorhi, a work of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Dear children, also today I bring you my blessing, and I bless you all, and I invite you to grow on this path, which God began through me for your salvation. Pray, fast, and joyfully witness your faith, little children, and may your heart always be filled with prayer. Thank you for having responded to my call. Do not forget that. In the end, my Immaculate Heart, will triumph.